This is all people played. You know, it was like Sanking, Potom, Shaker, and then probably some Lina or Lesh. Lina, Lesh, Sven. Yeah. I mean, at one point, you could, uh, like, Blink Dagger wouldn't get disabled, right? Mm -hmm. And so all the heroes that <laughs> have Blink, you could just Blink out of stuff. Shaker AA, that seems reminiscent of some TI5 days, but that's supposed to be EG, though. <laughs> Tomato, can you give us a brief summary of EG's playstyle? You play with uh, a lot of these guys in pubs and yeah, stream yeah, against yeah. them? Yeah, I stream against them. They play some high-level Dota. I think like their top three skilled team in this tournament. Uh, they have the same issue as all the high-skilled teams, where uh, they try to do too much stuff, and they end up losing the games themselves. It happened in game one against... Uh, uh, who they play? Newbie. Newbie. They tried like, some Naga combos, and that ended up losing the game. You guys could have played Calm and win their game. Oh, yeah, I remember the exact moment you were talking about where they slept the entire newbie team in mid lane and then engaged a little needlessly, got silenced in an enormous disruptor ultimate, lost most of their roster. So they're too next level for their own good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's almost kind of funny how, as you get good at a game, it's just as important to stop doing things as it is to learn to do things. Sometimes it's all about just getting small edges. You see here, EG's opening is uh, something that we talked about a little bit earlier, is that uh, EG like going for these heroes that can do, go to multiple lanes and have kind of multiple positions. So it becomes a little bit harder to read them. Right now they have both like their Potom and Sanking in. They can be played in different positions, both of them. Yeah. So it's kind of hard for Empire right now to predict what EG are going to do. And I think to me it looks like EG are kind of just fishing for information. They're taking two heroes that they really like playing. Yeah. And they're kind of just waiting for Empire to reveal what direction they're going to go. Yeah, I mean, Marana, Universe, and Sumeya both have played Marana in this tournament. I think Artur has also played it at some point. Oh, really? And I'm Safely not sure if they have... Uh, I don't know if they have played ever oh, Safely in Potom, but that used to be they a have. thing. Yeah, they might, they might have. So they can play it in almost all positions. I mean, with this sort of unpredictability, do you just make an even more focused draft if you're Empire, or do you also equally try to carefully judge what they're doing and play against it? Uh, you can't counter PKG. Like it's too hard. I, I, frames, I, I scream against them, and they just pick like random heroes, and they, they change the whole lanes all of a sudden with last pick. So, uh, I, and I don't think Empire does that. I think Empire plays around like resolution. They, they get him anti mage, morphing lich middle. They just play like solid standard Dota. So, if you were playing against EG, what, what would your plan be right now? Well, I think Empire doesn't care. They're just one of those teams that DS won a nice lane for resolution, and he's going to carry. That's how they've won every game so far. I won against them, and our plan was just make resolution play Necro. <laughs> and we won because of, like, he couldn't carry a Necro. So give resolution. If you're, if you're EG, force resolution into a hero which he can't carry the game with. Yeah. All right. Well, what are the big scary heroes that you never want to see on resolution? Uh, I think Leech Morphling Middle is super strong right now. Oh, that's right, yeah. His Morphling and Anti-Mage have been very successful. You do see Lich, Lich was first banned by EG. Lich Kunga, first bans by EG, so that option is no longer available for Team Empire. Faceless Void banned from Evil Geniuses and straight into Winter of Wyvern. The Wyvern's pick's a little strange. It reminds me a yeah. little bit of the... Uh, of the Razor pick that we saw today, it's like it's good against some heroes, but you, it's not particularly good versus the heroes that they have right now. Also, they picked it into AA. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure why that is. In general, from my experience at least, Wyvern is one of the heroes that you pick when your enemy has a lot of kind of physical damage. A lot of and summons. Yeah, a couple of summons. You want to throw that ult out, maybe get a, get a kill or save some people. But right now, it looks like Empire's lineup consists of almost exclusively magic damage. But we'll see if they. Maybe they have a plan with this Wyvern. Empire has also been turning towards PL a little bit more for resolution. I know you like that hero a lot, Tomato. Dude, I love Phantom Lancer, too. <laughs> it's a nice anti-mage game. Let's see resolution anti-mage. What makes uh, anti-mage so good against this Evil Genius's lineup? Uh, lack of lockdown, mostly. They only have like one reliable stun. It's like sinking stun. Yeah. And arrow doesn't count, really. <laughs> I mean, I suppose you could encase Anti-Mage with Winter Wyvern and fire an arrow away. I mean, I, technically that's a setup. Give him some free health, though. Yeah, Anti-Mage is one of those heroes that go... Uh, it, it matches up pretty well with the peel. I think if you want to pick that Anti-Mage, you would want to do it last pick. And unfortunately, they don't have the last pick. So yeah, they're going to go for Sven, which is kind of straight up. I mean, it's, it's pretty clear Sven is one of those heroes that Deals very well with the Phantom Lancer. 
Oh, yeah, the Great Cleave from Sven dealing area damage. Phantom Lancer summoning a billion Phantoms that die instantly. And even from Team Empire, just looking across the board, there's great AoE and some really nice team fight opportunities available to them. I don't think you can really have too much, though, versus, uh, versus PL. I think some of the teams have been picking Timbersaw a lot also versus PL, which I think is pretty good here. Doesn't really care about Wyvern too much. It seems like a bit of a tough PL game. Yeah, the yeah. Batrider, Sven, and Shaker are all heroes that, <laughs> that are pretty good at dealing with this hero. Shaker's like the main counter to PL. That's <laughs> I'm surprised they picked PL at seeing first picker Shaker. I'm thinking that EG, I'm, I'm curious if they're going to throw another core, like a, sort of a, a scaling hero out for Universe, or what they're going for. Another hero that uh, we could see potentially is the Enigma, as there's no, there's no real good way of uh, dealing with that Enigma BKB Black Hole for Empire, and it is a hero that Universe likes to play. At this point, looking at the Evil Geniuses lineup, what do they need? They get the last pick? Obviously, they're going to be able to wait until see what Empire's last pick is, but what is Evil Geniuses really fundamentally lacking? Mm, I, I, I like Nick, like uh, Pike Cut said. I think that there's no counter that like, Empire can pick, and uh, he's going to have a nice lane, to be honest. So, uh, yeah, I think Nick's going to pick. I think Roundups uh, line up pretty well because like, they have late game and uh, deals to spend pretty well. It's like PL's not going to deal with spend, neither does Mirana. And then Enigma Black Hole and Midnight Pulse, yeah, it does pretty well. In terms of final bans, Outworld Devourer. Team Empire's turn oh, to Enigma. Enigma banned out. Nice read. I mean, we'd expect at this point, uh, you know, I think it's pretty clear who's going to be playing who on Team Empire. Free Evil Geniuses, Sumail on Mirana mid, Phantom Lancer, RTZ, and then. Wyvern Sand King. Well, see, that's where that's where EG can kind of go multiple ways. Yeah. Uh, I'm Universe not saying that's. Like yeah, exactly. It, it, it's not necessarily that that's not what they're gonna do, but it's just that they have options. So basically, they get to see the last pick of Empire, and then they get to choose kind of which matchups do we want, which of our heroes match up the best against theirs. It looks like Empire are going to pick their mid hero last, unless this is an Earthshaker mid. Oh, oh, Ember Spirit, very explosive and damage. Can be a little fragile at times, but has an unbelievable ability to escape sticky situations. Seems like a tough game for a peel to kind of carry in. Yeah. You got this, Phantom Lancer, I believe in you. Ten Don't listen to this pie cat guy that predicted Team Liquid's last game perfectly. <laughs> the question is if they have uh, invested too much into countering this peel, um, because EG have a lot of, I mean, they have four other heroes and if you sometimes, when you go all in too much on one hero trying to counter it, you forget a little bit about the others. Last pick, who are you thinking, Merlini? Oh, so, so the main role spot that we're talking about was thinking Marana. Uh, the question is now whether they want the Marana mid or w whether they want it to support. Um, not particularly sure which one they would favor at the moment. I don't really see anything wrong with the core Marana right now. Yeah, Marana M versus Ember is pretty nice. Oh, Melvin and Boker. Now, as always, who the hell is playing who? Sumail, Mid, Invoker, certainly RTZ, Phantom Lancer. Universe will be on the Marana this game, which means Crit and Zai on Wyvern and Sand King. Of course, Team Empire, expected players on expected heroes. It's time for game one of our final series of the day. Both teams face elimination. It's EG versus Empire. Take it away, casters. Elimination games always bring in the biggest pressure. EG, no strangers to this. Team Empire, well, they are maybe a little bit more stranger to it, but Resolution, no stranger to the main stage here at TI, being in the grand final before, even though not a victor. Yeah, he's he made a really big name for himself last year. And so far, he's been really delivering in the tournament. In a way, it's strange that when we talk about Team Empire, we highlight so, put so much highlight on the player who's actually not in the team officially. Yep. Um, so I would like to talk a little bit more about the other players. Like the, everyone Definitely. keeps talking about this resolution show, but you have to think about okay, if you're bringing in the stand-in and you already you had a parry player like Chappie who's very adept at a, at a set of heroes, resolution maybe has other heroes he shines on. You 
you bring in this stand-in, it's oftentimes a better strategy for a team that brings in a new player to build around him and utilize the four core that you already have in your team to give him a good game, rather than expect him to completely adapt to the team's playstyle. So I think it's very natural for Empire when the stand-in is a carry player that they try to set him up for success, especially when it's such a capable player's resolution who is mechanically regarded as one of the absolute best in his position. But that doesn't belittle any of his teammates. Like, Empire yeah. in their own, have helped their own on all of their players, and we've seen standout performances from every player. Uh, looking over to EG, uh, they looked a bit, I guess they looked a bit shaky, I want to say, against Newbie. They had some moments of brilliance and just some moments of very unusual lack of coordination and, and bad, bad play calls that we, we don't expect out of EG. It's that moment when you wish that Universe video went just one extra TI further so we could look back at, like, like they said, like, oh, we want to get that head, that loss of against CDEC out of our head and just move on. And the same kind of thing may have had to happen. They were really leading in game one against Newbie, yep. and then caught on their own shoelaces in the mid lane fight. Uh, Sean was bringing up that 15 minute disruptor ultimate. It did so much work. They have to reset, think about it again, and try and start in a good foot. And a good way to do that is having Zai coming to contest the rune. You're looking for the fire strike. It's going to go onto Resolution. Maposhka is here. Can't do much though. When Universe connects with the arrow, Resolution needs a life. Turns for a storm off of the sound. Not only will he take room, but he'll take the first blood. And this is a dangerous thing. You do not feed a Samael Invoker. Invoker has had very varying results, I want to say, in this tournament. There's been some Invoker performances that really fell flat, and other games he looked, he looked good. But in, on average, in, this hasn't been a great Invoker tournament, I would say. So very important for this hero to get a head start. You see uh, Empire immediately trying to counteract it. Roger on the Shaker is just going to run in and be annoying to Samael. Actually, oh. Samael needs to... Take care of his career. That he right. does. All good. <laughs> Roger was just hovering around. It's the vision, crit as well as Zai. You talk about like Invoker not having a great time in mid. They're waiting for Roger to initiate. Auto walk underneath the Observer and Sentry. Already the Sun Strike again on the money. Roger needs to be more damage. The Fissure connects on two. He's into the trees. Three HP. He drops down two, but into the safety of the Tier One Tower. The Earth Shaker will survive, revealing the gank on the mid lane. And the thing is, when you're rotating two supports together like this for the first whole minute, they were waiting a long time in the tree line for Crit's uh, Arctic Burn to be available again. This gave a lot of space on the lanes. If these, fails, uh, <laughs> if these kills fail, uh, it gives a lot of space to Empire. And you can already see that they're taking some advantage. Even with all this pressure they tried to put mid, the, the Ember Spirit is having a good time since he wasn't the one being gone on. And Ghost Stick in the top lane, this is a good matchup for Phantom Lancer. You need to keep that in mind. This is a, a specific counter pick EG took because of that Bat Rider. Uh, Arteza will be having a great time up here, and he needs to. It's not a good PL game apart from that, like the panel pointed out. So, important for EG to get the right start in the right lane. Needs the farm to offset the disadvantage and the abilities, but Ghost is still going to get some good levels on top. So as long as Arteza doesn't kill him off, then it's still going to be a win, but Arteza is still going to be very willing to fight him underneath the tower. But only for this early point. You can watch for the rotations around the bottom rune, the two-minute one. It's going to spawn top as a regeneration rune, so both Roger as well as Crit, have to back off. And it will be Samael to grab the regeneration rune. In fact, he doesn't even want it, denies it, doesn't want to waste the time. <laughs> oh, well, maybe it would have cost him a CS in mid. It's 100 mana, I guess. Creep wave was under the tower, so yeah. yeah. Gotta go for that. Uh, this new Alacrity, I actually haven't seen this animation yet. That's from the, the new Immortal that came out recently. <laughs> Bottom lane. Fissure. Fissure, just trying to create some space. Zai. Even with Boots can't get close enough, and he doesn't have that second level up just yet, just shy of it, in fact. Same with Crit. So there's no bonus damage arriving from either Zai or Crit just yet. Now they do hit their level 2s, but Arctic Burn onto the cooldown. Gonna need to wait a bit on that, Samil. I don't think it's time just yet. Um, and they're looking he could try to straight run down mid and see if he could do it. I don't think so. And Zai is just chasing after Maboshka. He doesn't have any real help, but... That Sunstrike, middle lane, it actually looks towards FN, Samael. He was tossing up whether or not his bottom lane supports could set up for that Sunstrike or not, and couldn't. Tried to have a crack at the Ember Spirit instead. I actually wonder when we... Okay, so this is a little bit of not very chronologically thinking right now, but if you look back on the draft, uh, this Ember Spirit pick from Empire made EG really think before they picked this invoker. I think this Ember pick might have even been what EG wanted for themselves uh, for Samael in the mid lane. Uh, could have been a very interesting pick for them. It's a, it's a hero we've seen uh, Samil play in a lot of high-stakes matches, and 
I think it would have rounded up their lineup pretty nicely. Fissure bottom. Yeah. Does have the lead. He's fine. Yeah. Universe doesn't care about the rock walls. And he still's got the extra oh, arrow. Crit. Nice hit into Maposhka. Do they have the damage required? One more hit and the hit from Universe. It will connect. And EG, they are patient on the off lane. The Team Empire is support so far, which have had a bit of a problem. Not really getting what they want, but at the same time, Crit as well as I committing a hell of a lot to achieve. He's just two kills so far for EG. And it seems the game plan from EG as well is, let's try to uh, contest resolution a bit. They made that first rotation to me that wasn't successful. Since then, they've kind of played this... It's almost been a hard tri lane bottom. I want to say pseudo tri because they're still moving around, but they are definitely committing a lot of resources. Uh, we saw this being very successful in the game yesterday between DC and uh, IG Vitality, the elimination game where uh, Paparazzi Sven got countered super hard in the safe lane. So I was thinking about it. Uh, he needs the allure. He'll need the illusions to tank the tower if he wants to dive under that. Destroy the barracks, then get back. Yeah. Yeah. The other issue, too, is the fact that Samael still needs a little bit more mana regeneration. He's uh, not having that Sunstrike exactly ready, so he needs to invoke it up and still have mana to cast it. But he's getting back up bit by bit. Oh, stun on bottom. They're going to connect the arrow. Roger's in trouble. And nowhere to really escape from that one. Good setup stun into Universe's follow. And there's and not much resolution you can do to save him, even if you want a Warcry. This has got a good mix of magical damage and the physical. Zai now making his way down. He's got stick charges, but that won't be enough to get him the mana to get the Burrow Strike off. So they're just more posturing against resolution, keeping him out of this game. And now that EG has made it very clear what the game plan is for them contesting this bottom lane, the question is, what's the counterplay from Empire? We're going to see this replay right here of that kill stun into Arrow. As PyCat said, eight-year-old play. <laughs> easy. And that's not in the age of the players. It's not, I guess technically eight-year-olds could also pull that off. It's not that hard. Lane because it's <laughs> Arrow, but you know, it's, a, it's an old thing from uh, Dota history. This combination of heroes has been played for a very long time, and it still works. And it does. Old tricks. So the question is, what I was going to say is, what are Empire going to do? Uh, are they going to sack resolution a little bit and look to apply pressure elsewhere? Or are they going to double down on this bottom lane and try to bring over maybe the uh, Ember Spirit, who has hit the level set, uh, level six? Sorry, uh, he's ready to make his first rotations now. A great amount of burst damage can come up from him against these heroes in the bottom lane. Oh. Being put on resolution. Warcry in the Splinter Blast. That is level two from Crit, so he's prioritizing the chip range damage. But well, it's a good question. Sacking resolution. We've seen Sven's oh, have Zai has a, a haste. real, real issue if they try and fight from behind. So Zai might have that haste, but FN in the neighborhood. The Dire Observe Ward hasn't seen him yet. He's been behind the trees, now reveals himself in the lane. And Defensive Spirit also available. Samael stands his ground. Damn, he does a lot of damage. That's plus 113. Has to spirit away FN. Zai not able to get there at the right time to help out Samael, but Samael really showcasing that 200 damage physical. And you need to you need to keep in mind when you're playing against Invoker as Emperor Spirit that he can always remove the Flame Guard with the Tornado. So uh, Samuel will very easily be able to allow his team more than anything to to kill off the Ember later on in the game. We we'll already see him. Uh, I want to say this is fairly unusual that Invoker only gets one in Quas and then two Wex. Zai. Sword Zai is going to be dangerously close here. He walked right over the top of the Radiant Observer when Bar strikes down, but Spirit Committal is there from FN. He really wanted that kill. Needed something to make this mid lane better for him as he was falling behind the net worth of the Invoker. That was very nice from FN. He dodged the tornado as well with that uh, activate fire and then he jumped across the NATO into the kill and gets out afterwards. And you're right. This mid lane is going great for Samel. I've seen this before. He's one of the absolute best mechanical players in this lane. If the matchup is even or even favors him, then he will most of the time come out ahead even with a bit of contesting from Empire, it didn't really do as much as they would have hoped. Yeah, they needed to contest more. We've seen teams actually commit like a, like tri lanes to mid to try and stop Samael from doing what he's doing. Yes, 22 to 9, 23 to the 1 of FN. That's a 1.5 level difference in this. Spirit Committal, Go6 rotated off the top lane, Lasso is up. It's a level 2 Sand King. At the same time, it's a level 2 Sand King. Yeah. You're not really getting much out of Zai, you're 8 minutes in, and he's getting no levels. That is... That is one of the weaknesses of running an aggressive tri lane like this, is if you don't get successful pulls off, your support's oh, going to go level. Yep, they're thinking about it. Arrow's ready now. The resolution's going to let the Storm Bolt go. What's really got left? Rod just moving his way up. Observer and Sentry's giving him the vision on the other side of the tree lines. So they know at least that crits by himself. And this really, right now, this really feels like a game for Empire where the lanes, they must be feeling the pressure. They're actually losing their lanes really, really hard. The top three CS by quite a margin, is on EG. They have a 3k gold lead in minute 8 without taking a tower and fight with a one kill. So this is raw lane farm. 
that they're just winning on. And if they can just keep this pressure up, they're going to eventually scale into a very good position with their lineup later on in the game. Empire, on the other hand, kind of feels like they have to activate their Batrider to, uh, to organize some good moves as, as we talked about. Ember still playing catch-up. Kosi's going to take some time wow. before you can say he's activated. Still trying to go for drums before he gets anything else. Oh, Zai's going to get pushed down the bottom lane. So Zai, it just seems to be a bad day for an SK. All three kills of Team Empire have been on Zai, the Sand King of EG. I mean, sometimes I just wonder when they're using these chat lines, if there actually is any history behind. It's, it's like the teams that use these uh, frequently are just using things that make no sense in the context, I, almost every time. We can point it's out the fact that each thing that makes sense out of it. EG in game one, Sunstrike for Blue! Oh. Barely could have clipped the eyes and said, now it's the spirit of FN going forward. They need detection onto the Invoker, sitting inside that Ghost Walk. They're just trying to burn him with AoE. They don't have mana on the Earthshaker for the moment. His totem just came back off cooldown. He's oh. trying to look for him, but Samael is invisible. They have no idea that he is already back to the T1 tower. He's been so confident he held onto his 9-1 charges. Now he'll burn them as he goes back. That's the, that's the classic first gank on Invoker where Invoker uses Ghost Walk. And then you're like, why didn't we have detection? And then you have detection the rest of the game. Uh, apparently you don't. They're actually not even buying any. Maybe they can't really afford it. So the support duo of Empire is really poor. Uh, the Shaker is very far away from Blink Dagger. It's 10 minutes in, granted, but hasn't had too much success around the map. And AA is not doing very great. Uh, quick moment. Mouse disconnected. So how does mouse disconnect? You kind of pull it out? Don't yank. Yep. Just, you know, it's it's a high-stakes game, but you don't need to, like, move your mouse around that. I've seen people destroy competing Throw it off the table. games. <laughs> yep. DC. Oh, better to throw a mouse than the game. Bottom lane TP's coming oh, in. Oh, that's not a good leap in the burst. Firefly. The leap didn't go where Mirana wanted to. And this all-hour resolution to get a big kill. It's been Zai dying the rest of the time. They have Moonlight Shadow available. The Cold Embrace makes it work a little bit harder for it, but with a Pochka here too. Crit trying to make a break for the tree line. The seven stick charges. Don't know if that'll be enough to really get him out of this one. The Cold Feet will trigger, and they burn, as well as freeze, onto the Winter Wyvern. Empire getting what they want. They do lose their bottom tower, however, but they get two kills in return. Yeah, that's a that's a fairly even trade overall. It was a support and an offlaner that died for EG, and Empire rotated down four heroes to try to take that fight. Uh, if they would have held their tower as well, it would have been a very good move for Empire, but it, as it stands, they're still just getting out farmed a lot. And now, EG are like, okay, we have a level 3 Sand King, minute 11, he needs a lane, so Zai is going to be a bit quiet for the next couple minutes in that top area going to work toward his level 6 and 7 yep. and get some progress toward that Blink Dagger. It's a good time to do it as well. You realize Team Empire, it's around the 11-minute mark when there should be at least some trip, if not quad stacks of Ancients for Resolution to go off and farm, and that's what he's farming up right now. So the rest of the EG supports actually have to help Resolution at this point. He hasn't uh -oh. had the greatest start. The Fissure block off, maybe not exactly what they were looking for, and they've already burned the Shrine. Now, EG have no idea this is going on because they got no vision on the other side of the map, but they should have enough damage to get through it. <laughs> and again, maybe they don't. Resolution was trying to save God's strength, I believe, to go for the second camp, and that's actually where they're moving their attention now, leaving the Granite Golem behind as well as the Thunder Lizard, who seems to be not wanting to stay at base. He's actually sitting outside of the, of the, uh, of the area. What else have we got coming out? So AA is almost level 6. It's a very integral part of the Empire lineup being able to counter the Winter Wyvern. As the panel pointed out, very strange in a way that EG chose to pick Wyvern in this game uh, into the heroes that Empire were showing at the time. Um, but with this, with this Ice Blast, they can very easily set up kills that... Ember is one of those heroes where you're usually in the situation where you're just lacking a little bit of extra to get that core kill. Most of the time you can solo supports, but cores will get away with like 200-300 HP. You can combine those level 4 chains into an Ice Blast, and all of a sudden this Ember feels like he can kill almost any hero on the map. Resolution's finally Careful. taking a stack at the moment, and well, if the Ember wants to be involved in the kill, he'll have to be pretty quickly and also find some regeneration. It's the three-man smoke up from Empire. They're observing one, watching Crit as well as Universe come up the hill. But instead, they want the bigger one. They want to kill off Arteezy, and they're able to do so. He died. Ice Blast and Echo Slam, something AG was specialist at. And a previous TI. Oh, Universe is going to get pushed to here. Double damage rune. Nice for him to get. Keep that momentum going. That's now three kills for Universe for his one death. 
But it's coming at a cost. The fact that Sven is able to start playing catch-up, even with that, like his catch-up game has only brought him up to 4.4k in the net worth. It's nowhere near what you're looking at from EG. They're so far ahead on their calls of EG. It's strange when you look at the CS numbers, and it feels like EG should be further ahead on net worth and experience than they are, but the game is still fairly even. It's a 1k experience lead. The 3,000 gold is definitely substantial, but this game is easily within reach for Team Empire if they set up any of their good team fights. Their lineup is incredible at fighting. One thing that neither lineup is particularly good at is pushing towers, and that could lead into this type of game where the important fights start happening minute 30. And if you have a farmed Sven, you know how that often goes. Empire definitely have the tools later. Right now, EG are yep. still in good control, though. As both of us here, it's like the first phase Ancient Apparition pickup. Yes. No alchemist shenanigans like we saw earlier. It's pretty much just straight Radiant raw on fighting. And awesome. in the late game, getting hit by that Ice Blast is dead to evil Jesus. And there's a great setup in the form of the Earthshaker. You still need to see items. That Ice Blast is now flying its way down to the south. Ghostic has blinked. No lasso. It's got eight seconds on cooldown for the moment. So the Ice Blast will connect that easy. Just going to doppelganger away. The Ice Blast chill effect will still remain on him. And FN. Here he comes, but just to defend the tower, which is very, very low. Ghostic, he needs the time, and now it's there. Blink Lasso, crit is the primary choice. If they can see it, Arteezy's calling the fact that the Batrider is missing. Right now, he's in land clearance business. I'm not sure if EG had that lasso perfectly timed or not, but that five seconds made a very big difference. If Ghostic had the lasso, they would have definitely pounced on that, on that PL, trying to get a kill. Now, instead, it's going to be EG making the smoke rotation here. They have a ward that sees the... The movement trajectory of two of Empire heroes con connecting with that mid lane. And if they can get a good backstab here, they could set up for a very nice team fight for themselves. Backstab might Roger's be Roger's gonna break it though. Smoke's already broken. There goes your, your curse out. Ghostic, the arrow's gonna connect. Sunstrike as well. Roger, no way to survive it when EG commits so many abilities. But now it's up to Team Empire. They wanna try and turn this fight around. Flame Break pushing Crit away from the Ice Blast. He still wants to hold his ground. And that'll mean he'll die to FN. So a one-for-one -one trade off support for support. I think Empire's fine for that. It, it sucks losing your Shaker who's making progress toward the Blink Dagger, but if that's what uh, Smoke is going to bring with it, that's, that's all right for them. At the same time, EG keeping the farm up. Some mail is getting really, really farmed this game. Yes, almost 10 CS per minute, 16 minutes in on Invoker. His Aghanim Scepter is only 400 gold away. And as much as I said that a hero like Sven can take over a game in the, in the later portions of the mid game, Invoker is one of those really dangerous heroes when he starts getting this amount of farm. Yeah. Uh, I think widely regarded as one of the absolute best late game heroes in Dota. And the only real way you deal with Invoker later on is either by having massive catch for him in and Empire out first, or... Oh, Blink Lasso, there's your catch being put to use. He died Sand again. King will fall and Team Empire. Yeah, well, we can make that. That's now four deaths. He's got his uh, fantasy team a little bit wrong. You don't get plus points for deaths as it falls. It's not easy being a punching bag. It really is, it's Cinderin. Resolution's coming towards the mid, bringing the Mask of Madness and Gold Strength. They'll commit both to bringing down the Tier 1 tower. There's no fortification for EG anymore. So Resolution, happy to grab the tower, back off. And all these kills, all these initiations that Team Empire have been looking for have been happening without Resolution. He's always been in the jungle farming and comes in the last moment just to take a little bit of the glory and the money. And he's building a very farm-intensive build here. He's going for both the Mask of Madness and the Echo Saber. Uh, this should make him the fastest farming hero on the map. It will have a higher pace than Invoker, even with his Aghanims, I believe, if they're just both free farming. He's See definitely moving goes. faster than Arteezy. Like, Arteezy, after that kill on bottom lane, kind of slowed down a little bit with his progression. It's just the nature of Phantom Lancer when you go for this build. Uh, if you want to really farm fast with Phantom Lancer, I think the first item you go for is Boots of Travel. I think overall it is faster than the Diffusal buildup. Either that or you get a Yasha. But Arteezy is going for the hybrid build that can also fight if it comes to that if necessary. And I think this is a better approach when you're playing against a, a counter core. If you're playing... If this was a great Phantom Lancer game, you could go for the farm build and be like, okay, if I get farmed, I'm going to carry my team. But Arteezy is in this position where it's like, if I get farmed, that's great. But if they do as well, I'm kind of still going to struggle to play my hero against the Shaker, Sven, and Ember. Gang is so. coming towards mid. Fan is the man. He's got a target painted on his back. Some male crit and universe will try and team up together. They want to curse and the they're going to start with a curse. This will actually line up for the arrow, which is able to connect. Sunstrike coming in too. SK can die in the meantime, but that's something we're all used to. FM dying, however. That is his first death of the game. And that's that's going to be a tower as well for EG. They get the tier one mid. Empire are trying to get as much trade up top as possible, but they're eventually going to have to back off here. Don't have enough in the tank. 
to really stay here. So that's a good move for EG. That's way better than the smoke they did beforehand because this one brings an objective with it. Don't yep, really they get two of them. They move to bottom lane. The damage they did previously yep. this tier two tower where the Batrider was looking for a kill. They now finish the job. That's easy, not even leaving in the real self behind lane. The illusions do the job. That's why they get the last hit in the tower. Something I'm curious to see in this game is what route FN takes with his Ember Spirit. So he's gone for the travels first, and now it looks like he's going for a Lincoln's. I guess he's tired of getting cursed uh, after one curse. But is this a physical damage Ember game or magic damage Ember game is the question. If you get physical damage, you can cleave and kill off the Peel Illusions very easily, but you already have Sven for that. And then you're fighting with physical damage into the Wyvern Cold Embrace. If you go the magic build, well, Maybe it's too late for that, and you already have it that in space. And there we see the kill on Zai that we didn't see earlier. Pretty straightforward. Lasso into Sandwich. Yep. Perfect combination. The Maelstrom does make enough sense, though. Like, we, we were debating this during another game previously. Oh, that's Ice Blast Zai. Again, <laughs> 0 for 6. At this rate, we're going to have a contender for the Melk Award. He does have the Moonlight Shadow back out. He is affected by the dust. He and is alive. He will survive. That's close. One more tick from Flame Break. Or just another second on top of him by Ghost, it would have been the kill, but he didn't dare to pursue there with uh, Zai stunning off to the side. Blink Dagger might have not been ready either, so they save him this time. Zai's like, finally, I get to walk out on the map for two consecutive oh, minutes where I get killed. We may, have, we may have a Wyvern sandwich at the moment, putting down the Vortex as well as the Colfi. Crit's got the movement speed, takes to the air with the Arctic Burn. Spirit Forge, you're going to have to get that side of Vistearing Chains into the Ice Blast and win to Wyvern. Well, he can't take the chill or the burn. And it's the burn that kills him. That's something you need to be very careful with uh, against Empire's lineup. They are very mobile. Both Batrider and this Ember Spirit can can punish out of position heroes very quickly. And it doesn't really matter who it is. Even this Phantom Lancer where you're like, oh, I'm against Batrider, you know, maybe I can doppelganger off. If you get lassoed and you get doppelganger off, the heroes will still run you down. Like Emperor, Ember doesn't care if you doppelganger away. He's just going to run after you at, at twice your pace. So. Gotta be careful with how and where they show their heroes. At least it was yeah, only support come. that time, but if they find our teasing now with this they flame of lasso, five second cooldown. It's the blink echo slam. That could be your easiest start. Give the extra vision. Not easy. Just walks into them. The ice blast committed. Nothing is left to chance here from Team Empire. And Ghosting, he even knew that was such a kill. He was looking for the second one. He was looking for any friends Arteezy had, but Arteezy had no friends on that bottom lane. And now it's EG looking for revenge instead for their fallen teammate. Uh, trying to make it down here in time to kill Rezo, but I think Rezo is going to get this in time and back off. If he's greedy here and goes to that last hit, he's dead, but probably thinks... Here comes Zai, so looking to initiate. It. He doesn't actually, he does have that blink deck and the sun strike is coming in, but the control is just not enough. Resolution already starting his TP. Ghostic also needs to get out. TP is off cooldown, and it looks like everyone from Team Empire as long as Ghost can escape from crit, he is under the vision of the Observer Ward. Where's that arrow from Universe? It'll come too late because it's on cooldown for the moment. So Ghost four star, one second. Here comes the arrow from Universe. It'll connect and Ghost will fall. Universe will be the man fighting the kill with a Maelstrom proc. Yeah, cooldown on four staff there. He used it instantly to save the, the Sven oh, earlier. Oh, Maposhka. That's easy looking for the solo kill. The Sun Strike from Samael. Easy, easy setup. Made all possible by Arteezy. Empire is still doing a good job of pushing in these waves, and most of most of the heroes dying in this game are really supports. There's so many support deaths and so few core deaths so far. Arteezy, I think, has the most death out, deaths out of any core with his two, I believe. And the only one who hasn't died so far is Samael, who's uh, who's at three zero one. I think every single kill he's claimed is the one that's not in front of him. It's always been the Sunstrike at range. Supports giving their life for their cause, but they're getting money back. The fact that Zai has managed to die five times and still picks up a blink dagger at a reasonable time. Yeah, it's, it's, it's alright. It's great for him. Given the circumstances, it's it's not too bad. I think he had it for a couple minutes already, so he gets a sub-20 blink on Sand King with five deaths. That's that's respectable. Yep. Doing it hard. Looking for the next smoke. They've got dust available, and it actually looks like Team Empire just have three players walking on top of that aggressive observer ward. Probably planted so they can track the farm rate of both Resolution as well as FM. They have to keep tabs on these two heroes. Especially the Sven. You do not want him getting in front. At the moment, the 10k net worth is pretty damn good for a Sven. Yep. The only downside is he's wanting to be number one. You always want to have that number one net worth. Right now, he's uh, 2.6k behind the Invoker. It, it, you reach this point now, though, when Invoker falls off a little bit in fights against the Sven in particular. 
Um, the reason is there's a couple of key items being picked up. FN has got the Lincoln Sphere against the, a couple of things, including some... He can also counterplay like the Cold Snap of Invoker. can be annoying. And the Sven now with the BKB. So you look at the graphs and you look at this net worth, and then you're like, when this BKB of Sven is popped, the only counterplay that EG really have is Winter's Curse. So if this Wyvern gets locked down, Empire can look really scary. On the contrary, you know, if EG find the right type of fight before Sven get, even gets the BKB off, they still have the burst to bring him down. There's no real save on Empire's lineup except that four staff. That Very smart read here from Evil Geniuses. There was no one defending the mid. There was no one actually saving the T1 tower on the top lane from Team Empire. They knew they were on the hunt. Universe is scouting the tree line with the arrow, but it was a five-man maneuver from Empire on the south on southern lane. That's the one they wanted. They couldn't find an opening. Apotra and Ghostic even firefly between the tier two and tier three tower, and they don't find their targets either. EG successful dodge. They got a good ward out though. Question is if EG know where this ward is. This is the kind of ward that can be very valuable when you have Batrider. Uh, you get deep vision into the enemy jungle, so you get to see movement patterns. And Bad Rider can obviously punish when heroes start running down toward the ancient area or farming the big camps here, uh, since he can fly over those cliffs and Moonlight Shadow. overtake them. Crit's going to get close enough to Resolution to get that curse off, especially as Resolution shows himself farming the wave. He has the BKB, the Kree wave's nearby, Zai moving in, Moonlight Shadow, they can just start with the basic stun from Zai. Fire strike it up, here comes your arrow, but the BKB from Resolution wants to stand and fight, already tricked off that Mask of Madness, needs the movement speed away, and he blocked up by Roger, who echoes sends only the fake PL. Still, Trick going down the sidelines, epicenter from Zai, the damage can now be put into the spend. Ice Blast's on the way in, it's going to connect on RTZ, or will it? He doppelgangers away! Resolution set up and wants the air by Samal and blasted into deafness. They may not be done yet. Ghostic. They realize there's no sentry ward nearby, and actually, no, EG will be retreating. There's no way this three man team can get a revenge kill onto EG quickly. This is one of the things I love about Mirana as a pick. There's almost no teams playing this hero. I think only really EG seem to favor the, the hero of this tournament. Moonlight Shadow is such a good spell. When, when you have these limited supplies of smoke, it can the game can reach stages when it's very difficult to find picks. But the Mirana there, the key part of that kill is the Moonlight Shadow. That's how they got the jump in the first place on Resolution. Felt pretty safe because of the warding that they had in the area after that Batrider and AA invaded, but... Sneak in there with the invisibility and find the biggest kill of the game. And that is Every a kill on Reso is huge. Because right. it's, it's separating it up, is allowing Invoker to be the stronger hero on the field. And you can see Samal making the spades of it, like getting involved in the fight, beating down to the bottom lane straight away, then letting the Forge Spirits kick in. And if no one comes to defend this, then again, more of Empire's maneuvers are going to be flagged. And EG, very hard to catch them by surprise when all the lanes are so consistently being pressured. Yep. And they're going to try anyway, a three-man smoke down mid. And this is a very, this is a good smoke in my opinion. It's, it's got some very hard, it's hard to read. It's a Lincoln Sphere though. They have to blink in, use the four star to trigger off the Lincoln Sphere. Now they can keep the lasso up. Ice Blast will connect. They have to keep Samael there and they're able to do so. Samael with 70 seconds on the sideline. But he pulled up the full Lincoln Sphere. Even the Fish are catching on Zai. A quick dusting. They don't want to hide anywhere. Bar strikes available for Zai. Now he gets it, but FN waiting with open blades behind the tier two tower. Gives back-to-back -back kills for Team Empire. Textbook smoke. They showed resolution in the bottom lane. I think they showed it here in the top lane as well, and the remaining three heroes look for Samael. It's a it's a kind of risky play, because if, if EG read this movement and they're on backup behind Samael with defensive heroes, that could have turned into a great counterplay. But they make it hard for EG to at least read what's going on. EG have their vision in the top area of the map, and therefore had no idea what was coming their way. And that's a big play from Empire. Two kills, one of them on a, one of them on some males invoker. His first death, they get a tier two. And Rezo, he's not done yet. Yeah, he's going to come up. He's still got a little bit more of that God Strength timing. At least force a reaction out from Evil Geniuses. Now he's done. He got it from the Arctic Burn. <laughs> the spirits are actually bringing crit down to half of his life. But no one's TPing out to the shrine. They're all coming home. 200 damage on the tier, tier three. Actually, almost. It's something I've noticed about Resolution in this tournament is that he seems to have a very, very good understanding of how far he can go. And that's why it's very interesting for me to see him dying to this Moonlight Shadow, because that might be the one time in this game where he didn't really have the correct read on what was happening, because you need to be a bit deceitful to, to trick uh, Resolution to catch him off guard. And he's, been, he's been having exceptional reads, and his Faceless Void game that we saw yesterday also just Hold phenomenal up. reads off. Oh, he is Fisher, dead. Roger! Moposhka teaming up together beautifully. 
They played that very, very patiently. They just letting the creep wave do its thing, and eventually Crit just came out feeling maybe he had the safety, but there's no vision for them on the bottom lane at all. In fact, both of the observe wards from EG, one of them's about to time out on top of their jungle rune, and the other one sitting in front of where the T1 tower used to be of Empire. And they don't see enough from this to really let them know where Empire's moving. So maybe a new smoke ward vision coming up from EG shortly. Could be. Or in the Moonlight Shadow. 45 seconds on that one. But look at the graphs, man. This is uh, this is a change of pace. EG had this like good five minutes, and now they've had five bad minutes. Everything on that graph is green, and the experience is pulled in the in the advantage of Empire already. And it's only a one K gold lead now for EG. So Empire with a couple good move uh, moves have put themselves in a good position now. Question is, how do they transition? Looks like FN will be going for the magic build. Uh, he went for the Maelstrom first. I wonder if he wants to finish the Mjolnir after this Blink Dagger he has queued up or has different plans later on. It's actually possible to do hybrid builds on Ember, where you have like this early magic damage and then you transition into more physical-oriented line of or damage later. I'm uh, very curious to see what his idea is in this particular game. Empire's got the primary concept of let's go kill them all if possible. Lartizi's the man who could get caught out. The Echo Slam reveals the real oh, they one. Oh, they the roll one. The arrow flies forward. Resolution soaks up with his BKB. Already Zion Artizi have fallen, so there's no fight here for EG. Empire are feeling it, man. That's seven kills in a row. And another tower. Roshan is available. 40 seconds on the PL and the Sanking on 30. They don't think they're going to go high ground. <laughs> According to the game, that was a five man Echo Slam. Yeah, uh, that was a Artesian, a lot of Artesis. Yeah, every Artesian oh, die for it. He gets out of range of the Ice Blast. The arrow will connect over on Roger. Meteorite still rolling towards him. So Roger starts to burn, getting hit by the tower. He won't be able to get out this one. Universe will kill him off. And Evil Genius is at least get the consolation prize as Empire do more chip damage to another tier three. Very nice meteor comes to mail. He cast it far away from the Shaker, but anticipated that Shaker would be stuck long enough for the for the meteor to actually reach. It took like a full two seconds before Roger started taking damage from it, but then Cold Snap plus Meteor combo under the tower will secure some mail that kill. And Empire maybe will be extending a little bit there. They got another 300 damage in, but this time on a different tier 3 tower. And the death of the Shaker. It seems like EG are confident to go for their next move. Four man smoke. Yep. Showing our TZ top. And maybe this time they're hoping that Empire want to go for him again. The line is drawn to move to the tier 2 tower. However, both of their observer wards that they planted down are primarily looking at the front end of the Roshan pit. One of them probably won't survive as there's already a sentry ward there. But Team Empire, do they read this? FN's got a lot of pressure on bottom. He's sending his illusions in with a catapult wave. This and is this super may obvious force now. EG to come back as no one is here. So they leave it to Zai. Mr. Zero Seven to do the work. Blinks in for the Sandstorm at least forces FN to back out. This is one of the benefits you have of having uh, Ember Spirit in a game like this. There's not that, that great waste of EG for killing him, especially they, they always need at least two heroes to get the kill, uh, maybe even three. So if he is pushing this wave bottom this far, it very quickly becomes obvious what kind of move EG is going for. And Resolution is just hiding, waiting until EG started showing on the map again. Now he's back to farming this top area. This going is for the Linkins, by the way, after Blink. You can't even curse him when he gets that. Sven is getting scary, Toby, and it's not only him. The Ember, as we talked about, has a good matchup, and he's getting farmed too. I think you have kind of, you know, they kind of dropped the ball in the last five to ten minutes. Haven't really accomplished much. They've, they've been trying. They've been looking for the opening, but they haven't had the vision to really achieve it. And this is going to get harder. Ghostic has got the jam of True Sight on him, purchased up by Maposhka, and they're looking for the warding as a BKB too. Yeah, he the does. Bat Blink, really BKB, well. and four stuff. So he can jump in, trigger the Lincolns on the Invoker and still get out, and if he is that first initiator, you've still got the Lincoln Sphere, which can be given by either the Ember or potentially the Zven. You can double stack this on your front runner for Team Empire. This should be, uh... Wait, did he just... He used okay, no, no, he, he, he walked over the top of an Observer Ward and didn't kill it. Oh. Uh, <laughs> goes back and then remembers himself. EG need to uh, keep an eye out for Roshan now. They need to have a feeling. This is the Radiant team that has good pushed out waves. They have God Strength. Should be able to kill Roshan pretty easily. The Sven can obviously solo it at this point. I hate, so. I hate to tell you though, they can't keep an Observer Ward up. When you've got a Batrider around there, they just lost their two new Observer Wards they planted. And Crit's only got one more left in, in, in his infantry at the moment. It's very difficult for EG to establish vision. And Samael just walked underneath the Observer Ward. Ghostic may believe, ah, oh, he's not close enough for it. He's feeling it, but can't get it. Samael playing it safe here. He's gonna alacrity his 
Forge Spirits, and Resolution is going to munch them up very easily. Actually, he's going to lose quite a bit of mana here. Yeah, got to get rid of those PL Illusions, making sure they don't just keep copying on him. So he has to turn and fight him. They dealt a lot of damage because of that Minus Armor from the Forges. Oh, look at these look at these Observer Wards as well. So good from Team Empire. Even if EG feels like they've found one of them, they're not going to get both. It's too much of commitment for the support set. Resolution's going to start up on Roshan. Meanwhile, FN attacking into the bottom. Zion RTZ can't get the initiation off, so FN quickly back out again. The Sun Strike scouts at the fact that Roshan is being done. Resolution and Roger are going to be joined by FN inside the pit. Can EG get there in time? The Moonlight Shadow, they're trying to run forward. In comes Zion, goes for the Bar Strike, doesn't the Tiger. Resolution killing on all oh, of Angus the Immortal. Snatched down by Zion. Resolution killed him with a cleave. Now they want to get back out of this one. Goes to get the BKB. Isolated in the middle of five heroes, baits created by Roger, blinks down the side, blinked up to try and find him. They're trying to disengage, but Poshka won't be so lucky. Arteezy is all over him like a hot rash, blocks him in the corner with all the rest of the Arteezy five-man team. And they may try now, EG, to gain something on the map for the first time in 20 minutes. Split second decision there from Zai, just going for it. He blinks in, gets the stun. Actually, he didn't even stun the Sven. The Sven got the BKB off very quickly, but... I thought Resol he was resolution. Dead. So this is one of those moments where it, having six slots at this point in time, Rezo wants to have all his items on him because if the fight breaks out a little bit earlier, he needs all of his items available. But when Roche is about to drop, you want to swap an item, and we're going to see Here it, it right is now. again. So Zai goes in. Rezo currently has six items. It too. He currently has six items in his inventory, so he can't pick it up. Yes, the stun on Zai doesn't get the kill, and now Zai has already taken it. He swaps in the Mask of Madness to try and get it. Rezo's like. You know, yeah, it's that. it's one of those difficult moments because you need to move the mouse down there and move that item into your backpack, and it takes time. And Zai's just faster because he already prepared a slot. The zero seven SK that hit zero stunts because the slot. Oh, mid lane, we don't have time for two. that. Big yeah, kill. Mid broke is gone. The ice blast is flying in. Does have buyback. But this should be forced maybe by Empire here. Yep, they're coming. FN's already arrived. Defensive spirit. They can start chipping away at the building. Defending is not easy right now for EG without that Invoker. He is their primary defense. Of course, there's other spells that are annoying to deal with, such as Splinter Blast, Star Storm, PL Swarm. But the, the thing is, if, if Empire don't want to push, this is at least a full minute of complete map control. They can push out all the waves, uh, force EG to camp inside their base once again. And these core picks are extremely important. Uh, Sumail has now died twice. It's been a long time since the last kill on him, but they... They're just as important every time. Yeah, spacing it out, and it's more and more money was Resolution who found it, so more cash coming the way that's Ben, who's looking for a Bloodthorn. As the BKBs get lower, that'll become more and more effective. At the moment, Samal's still holding his 10 second BKB. And you got another one on the way from Universe, so this is gonna make it two BKBs. Obviously, the Phantom Lancer does not want to build into this. He was actually looking at the Scardi originally, but now he switched his mind and. Uh, is going for the Lincoln Sphere. Honestly, I'm worried. Uh, I'm wondering if you want to oh, get one. Crit. Get out of there. The cold feed, the ice blast. It is just too much. FN jumps right on top of him and that's easy. He actually picks oh, no. Roger! Hits the two men. Perfect hit. FN will now get a double kill and EG retreat, retreat, retreat. Oh no, Arteezy actually completed that TP. I can't believe he went in for that. Crit was already completely dead. The Invoker was still dead. There's no way evil geniuses are able to retaliate in this fight. And just, this is a really greedy TP that gets immediately punished. Now Empire with three deaths. This time they're going to try to do some structural damage for sure. They're coming for the bottom lane. The mid lane is going to push in. It may get close enough to turn off that backdoor regeneration, but now here comes Resolution. Beat the tower, arrow flies forward. He'll just walk to the side, already Lincoln Sphere being triggered on him. But they take the tier three tower. This will open up the shrines, and Empire are happy with that. They're not going to force the issue much further than, than FN shipping the mid tier three tower. But they're back, they got the objective, and they hold the lead. And let's actually see it from Artiz, uh, from the perspective here in the mid. So Crit is already dead, and now Artiz completes this TP, has to try and disengage, immediately caught out, and this is two nice kills. He even stacks up with Zai. Just, it's a bit reminiscent of EG's games against Newbie yesterday, where EG are off to a good start, their lanes are going well, and this later on in the mid game, it's just like things start falling apart. They're not finding the moves, they're making these key mistakes where they're out of position, and Empire are just pouncing on them with these very mobile and fast heroes that just kill them too quickly. And EG don't get a time to stabilize and establish themselves in a fight before it's over. And this is more than crumbling. Like, they've they've swung this net worth in the last 20 minutes by, well, I, I, 15, well, I was, was going to, yeah, 15 grand. It goes up in the experience by almost 20,000. 
is not a minor swing. Definitely isn't. And uh, it's, at the, it's at this point you start wondering for EG. Okay, the, the BKB on the Marana is very close, as you mentioned. The BKB on Sumail is completed. Do you actually need to get a BKB on PL? You don't want to, but honestly, how is RTZ going to play these fights? If he goes in, there's so many things he needs to worry about. If he gets a BKB, he can at least limit the, the options that Empire have. Okay, then they can't really counter the Shaker anymore. The AA is not so scary. He can't get Sven stunned. He can't get messed with by the Ember Spirit, who has a magic damage build. You know, it's like, it sucks. You can still get lassoed, and you can still get killed by Sven, but... Is it better or worse than the alternative, which is building a lot of stats and then you're countered by everything? Now there's even a Bloodthorn on, yeah. on this Sven of Resolution, so even more value in the BKB. He does have the Manta, of course, but if that's already used, now Sven can single-handedly just slam him in one stun. He's he's 39 minutes in and already very happy with all six items in his slots. Ghosting, very happy to find this pickup. It's Arteezy, the Ice Blast chilled in FN. Even adding a spirit for good measure, but Arteezy down for 65 seconds. Buyback is available, but the bottom lane continues to remain under siege. And this is getting very, very difficult for EG. This is the game you want to step up, you know? This is the game on the big stage, and Ghostick is maybe playing his best game of the tournament. His bat rider in this game has been outstanding. 5-1 on 11, has found so many openings has been able to not only find the openings, but also assist Miposhka in the warding missions where they've gotten the intel that they needed to make the kills successful later on. And EG just seems like a completely choked out team with no control of the map. Here comes Resolution. That's actually God Strength being committed to kill off two Forge Spirits, but I think he realized he doesn't have a creep wave. So the God Strength still wearing off. Gozix looking for his opportunity. They put the Lincoln Sphere protection onto him as now the run forward. Oh. Arrow almost caught by three players, but well, they're matrixing me owing that. Feeding into the melee racks. Where's this defense from Evil Genius? As Samal burns his BKB nice and early. Looking for the kill under Roger, but the four staff gets him out of range of the Sunstrike. And Evil Genius says, for now, Empire will back out. Great hold. They didn't expend Arteezy's buyback. They took a little bit of damage on the melee barracks, which are going to heal themselves up. Uh, the BKB was even expended by Sven there, so a little bit of a commitment from him to no avail. Oh, all right, Sumail also used his BKB, so you could call that a draw, perhaps, but under the circumstances of being 5 on 4 in their own base, EG are probably happy that they didn't end up having to lose either a buyback or a barracks. It's the fact that Sumail takes his BKB to a 9 second while Resolution's burning his so much, he's already down to 5. Yeah. So there's a, not a lot of immunity time for Sven just to stand his ground and hit, and that's what he wants to have happen. And looking at his next item build, I'm assuming this is going to be the resolution special where he's like, you know what, I've, I've got six items, about to have seven, just put boots in the backpack and get pick the, up a full butterfly. Yeah, get the flutter in the fight instead. Um, it is just a vastly superior item to the treads later on in these fights. Also should be since it costs like four times as much. So oh. Nails TPing in, it's like they want to have this fight. Universal have to hit the arrow, they got the stun. The arrow will connect for resolution. The BKB comes off, Ice Blast is coming over the oh. top of crit! That damage is huge! Resolution, however, is now gonna hit the ground. No protection from BKB, Sven is gonna go down. Roger can only clean up the creep wave with his Echo Slam. Minimal effective damage onto EG and they keep the momentum going. Hitting into Roger, Universe becomes unstoppable. The big things, no Echo Slam, no ES. He's got no buyback for a full minute. And EG might be able to force the buyback out on Sven. It's a long way to go, however, and they're turning their attention towards Roshan. He's not back yet. It's two seconds late, could possibly spawn. Do they get lucky? They do they get do lucky? And they, yeah, they don't. It's it a minute and ten. Ten seconds after the Sven. So I want to say this respawn timer maybe favors Empire, as we're going to see the fight here again. So Rezo not getting the BKB off on the initial Sand King stun could have been a disaster. He still got it off just in time, but a little bit of miscoordination there. The lasso on the Wyvern and Sven at the same time going on the Sand King. They have two different targets. Crit is 100% dead there if they just combine, but. You know, high pressure environment, high pressure moments. Sometimes you make the wrong decision, and EG capitalized in a big way with those two kills. And they desperately needed that. They were starting to fall so far behind. This is a little bit of a dip back the other way, but no objectives for EG. No tower, no Roche, just additional farm and push on the waves. It's, it's getting a hold back on this game. It's stopping the graphs from going out of control, and they have started to dip back the way of the dire side. Not by much. That's what momentum is all about. And at the moment, they're looking to gain more. Put Samal on the front lines, let him be the initiator, catch out these cores. That's what they're looking for. Samal is now only a quarter of a level away from having level 25. Guess who already has it? It's gonna be, it's... It's the Ember Spirit. 
actually. Of, of all of the heroes. I was waiting for he's you to say, five. are you ready for the plus 65 damage talent tree? I think he's going to take the Stormhammer talent. I feel like that talent is almost always better. It's a five second cooldown on a two second stun. It's crazy good in these late game situations. They're waiting out the Sunstrike. There's a PL illusion. Empire want to kill off Roshan, but EG is watching like Hawks. Except Beastmaster is in Bible, so they're watching like Arteezy's PL illusions. To be careful here though. Oh, so Mayo is in an awkward position. Roger actually going to Shadow Amulet here. Well, at least he can set up. Yes. He's had a hard time getting in for the fights. He would really love to finish up the Shadow Blade. Having that Echo Slam fall short in the last mid fight. Learn from his teammate who isn't here. Let's go down mid and just hide right in the middle of the lane. That's right. It's, it's the emails that get late at night. I, I wish you were here, but by the way, you should do this in the game. <laughs> Uh, EG is just waiting so long in the Team Empire jungle. They're waiting for them to come down, but Empire is also waiting for Roshan. The Forest Spirit's gonna scan up a Poshka as well as Resolution at the pit. But of course, the PL Illusions are pushing into bottom lane. Team Empire are faced with a difficult choice. Do they try and defend? The Ice Blast will do a decent part to defend that, and they do send FN down. Easiest man to get back, thanks to the Ember Spirit with the Remnants. This is a very, very tense moment. This fight is going to determine a lot. There is no buyback on the Phantom Lancer. Invoker, I believe, does have it just barely. Splinter Blast reveals the Piranha position. Crits on the front line. Samael, they're using him as bait. The four star gets crit away. Fire strike and the Echo Sam. Is there enough space? Goes to the BKB off. The vision's done. It locked up EG. They're trying to retreat. Get away from the damage of Resolution. He's already cleaved two in twine, but they want more. The lands on the PL. Doppelganger is there. You can make a couple more RTs. He's trying to run west. They don't know where the real one is. Fin's going after him. They need to kill off PL. Two seconds. He's got Menacele available. More power. Arteezy down the hill. Which one's the real one? Evan make a choice. Side of fifth. Arteezy TP. Oh, but he can't make it in time. Vice Blast was coming, but Evan got there first. And no buyback for the PL. Will allow now Empire to go into Roshan if they want it, if not more. Crit really needs to watch, watch his positioning. I don't think he can be the one getting jumped on. This Wyvern is way too important for their counter engages. It feels like forever since we've seen a Cold Embrace and a Winter's Curse. He's always getting killed so early. And the moment this Wyvern is jumped on, it's like, it's just a paradise for Sven. During this BKB, nobody's going to touch him. His five seconds of complete domination just runs from one hero to the next, gets a couple of cleaves off, and when they finally get him under control, they've already lost two heroes and a half, and the fight's over. It can't, if they want to bait someone, it can't be that Wyvern. It has to be someone else, but who do you throw on the front lines? Do you want to throw the PL in there? He could just get blown up as well. But you could always just throw the bigger one that always got killed before. Why don't you throw Sai? Is that uh, enough? Throw him to the wolves, I guess. I yeah. mean, it seems to be the most ex be the expendable play. one out of EG, because you can't have PL, you can't have Invoker there, you can't have Mirana there, and you need the curse control. And the big, the really big issue is that EG just don't have information. They can't. We're talking about who to throw to the wolves because it seems almost impossible for EG to get the jump. It's very hard for them. And this, to me, when this Wyvern dies, this fight's almost unplayable. Like, instantly dead. We see the Shaker with a quick reaction, great play from Roger, just sniping down that Sanking immediately. And at this point, what do you do? Three on five. You've expended your BKBs. FN's on fire. Time to come back to the fight. Got one quick stun, Moonlight Shadow gives them protection, crit, looking to the bottom lane as FM with that slide of fist, Chris just trying to make it to the tree lines and away to safety. Should be okay. And he will be able to do that and so will Samael. They want to fight from inside their base, not outside. Fight from the position of power, from the position of height. Wait, where did the cheese go? Oh, Shaker has both, uh, sorry, Shaker has in this backpack and the Aegis is on FM. So big advantages going the way of Empire, 10k lead, Aegis and Cheese in their inventories and EG are back to the comfort of their home, which is not really the comfort they would like to have right now. They would like to have the comfort of the opposing team's home. And they haven't really been able to kind of almost cross the river for 20 minutes now, 25. And it is a really difficult game. This is Batrider Paradise. He's actually, in my opinion, uncountered in this game. We've seen so many Batrider games where if you don't have that Batrider counter, he seems to take over games. You could say, in a way, Cold Embrace is a counter, but just not against this lineup, man. If you Cold Embrace someone, they're still in a lot of trouble. So much magic damage from Empire. This great lineup with mixed damage types. The only counter is Zion jumping in to get the bar strike, but with the BKB being up, that doesn't even work. And he kills himself to do it. Yep. It's very unrealistic that you're going to get a blink stun. Unless you can get like a very quick blink into stun backwards and then force that. Could maybe get out. Go stick. Try and take to the hills at the moment. The four spirits getting rid of the Observer one. 
GG are definitely on the defense. Protect everything. They Matt Ryder's Firefly uh, doesn't have a lot of time left. And thanks to the very low cooldown of Tornado for Samael, they can chip away at these towers quite nicely. Oh, arrow connected. Five seconds, but it's way too far to venture out. In fact, at this point, even if Empire catch an arrow, it may be the bait that EG does not want to bite. It's good if it's on FN. I think then then Empire will win the fight if EG hard come in on the Semper. They probably have to wait until this Aegis expires. And that means even more gold gain for Empire. This is the classic late game situation where you have Aegis and Cheese and you have the map control hero. EG just are gonna get massively out far. Look at FN's confidence just going into the enemy base, clearing up the creep wave, jumping out, just keeping EG completely at bay. And the way I see it, the best play EG can possibly pull off is trying to bait Batrider to lasso a fake PL. That would be the start of a good fight for them, but Ghostic just isn't, he isn't taking it. Samael, maybe oh, they find a, good a too. moment. Arteezy's up here, Ghostic blinks away, Diffuse Blade already slowed him down, but Samael, That's they're crazy. actually backing off. You talk about fear. Like, you've got confidence from FN, you've got this living fear from EG. Anywhere outside the base is not safe. That's just not the way to start that kill either. You can't start it with a Diffusal Blade from PL. It has to be the Invoker with an instant damage sword. Oh, Resolution, he's inside the base looking for that opening. Samael, as well as Rez, do burn both their BKBs. Blink Fire is trying to do flying ghosting. This is a nice target for Searing Chain. Sai may not have the line for it. Sunstrike's coming down. The damage is negligible and Roger. He controls Samael on the back lines. Now the curse is out. It holds the Urshaker Deafening Blast. Means no real damage is being done to him. This fight split off into multiple parts. Universe is actually doing the damage with the Maelstrom. But Searing Chained up, he will fall down as well. There's more RTs to continue the fight, but they do not see Roger. He sees everybody else. A two for two trade off. But the initiation is gone, the BKBs are burnt, Roger able to grab that Empire gem and then get back out. That would have been a big win for EG if they recovered the gem of Empire. Even trading two for two like that would have been very nice, but yeah, they bring it back. And will probably, as a result, keep keep controlling the map as they have. Very important to note though, this Sven is, is starting to, to struggle a little bit. I'm wondering if Resolution is thinking about going for a refresh rod instead. Oh, he's just oh. thinking about killing crit, but he doesn't have vision. Uh, whoops. If there was a... Oh, actually, there's no counterplay there, so... Yeah. Lincolns, that Lincolns has been really nice. You see, he would definitely get cursed here if he didn't have the Lincolns, but... Zai, so like you said, he kind of has to go in. Good cold embrace, but it's not enough Empire. FN has the damage. It was enough. That curse was important. Yeah. So Mel needed to be freed for that fight. It's from both sides. This time around, like, EG got what we were talking about. They had Zai being able to get that initiation stun that EG can then move around. And the problem was then created by Roger onto Samael, but Winter Wyvern did his job. The cold embrace, he didn't make it e easy for Team Empire to grab one kill and move on to the next. And that's what happened in the mid fight, where you had Resolution just swing down onto crit, move on to another target that's already half low, and then just push everybody else of EG back again. Yeah. It's it's crucial that this BKB usage from Sven doesn't net kills. If they can avoid that, then they're kind of playing five on four and a half, I would say, after. Like, it's not like Sven can't do anything, but he's getting very controlled by all of this lockdown, especially from Samael. So um, the, the scary part for EG is what if Empire get the jump? If they get the jump, Sven comes in with a BKB and has a target, it gets dangerous very fast. Again, Wyvern's positioning is crucial, and the big difference this time is he's able to cast spells. Resolution now has the butterfly on him, and he's uh, going refresher orb as the next item. Yeah, there we go. Double the BKB. That's what he needed. Double the silence. As I was saying, maybe, he wants. maybe getting it over butterfly would have been a good choice as well, but he wants both. Yep. And he doesn't really have much reason to worry that he won't be able to farm them both. If, if Empire want, they have like this iron grip on the map for quite a while, kind of keeping EG in the stranglehold inside of their base for, it seems like, an eternity now. And this is when you start wondering, you'll think back on the group stage, how many games have Empire had like this? Yesterday, they had the game against Cloud9 for over an hour. They yep. were way further ahead in that one. It felt like almost impossible for Cloud9 to win that game. This game is winnable for EG. It definitely feels winnable, but it's hard. Will Empire be able to control the map, get the Aegis advantage once again? And more importantly, will they run their heads against the wall, or will they actually start getting some important objectives? 52 minutes, no barracks. The first lane is kind of insignificant at this point. It doesn't matter that much any longer. There's enough defense power from EG to defend one lane of Rax. Two would be difficult, three would be almost impossible for them. Yeah. Just because of the pressure that EG uh, Empire will apply. But you do actually have one thing in this fight, which is unfamiliar territory just at the moment because the item is kind of ass. Uh, the side device is over on the Invoker. There is nothing like the Legion Commander. There's no press the attack. There's nothing to break them free. No Lotus. They're looking for the Lotus Orb on the Earthshaker, but it's still going to take time for Roger to get there. Yep. It's a big item for a while. 
Yeah. Uh, he still needs to play around the Lincolns, though. The two Lincolns on both Ember and Sven. Ostick. He's going to find a target, Zai, into the Sandstorm. Quick four staff away. They have the Observer and Sentry watching Ghostic, and he knows it. Thanks to the Gem of True Sight, they'll get rid of the Observer Ward, making Samael blind on the map. Crit's also a long way out with Zai. They are in almost no man's land inside their jungle. Both have TP scrolls available, but they're like trying to make a break for the tree line. Crit jumps inside the Invis, another Sandstorm from Zai, and every player from EG who was up on the northern side have now returned home. And FN takes care of that top wave. He doesn't kill it off entirely, but he gets most of the creeps down to half. So this momentum in the top lane should shift. And in addition to that, Rezo is going to cut this creep wave top. So once again, EG playing one lane. Or Roger, really. he's found a target. The Shadow Blade, he's right on top of him. Arteezy, you got multiples to choose from. They're going for the individual one. Instant stuff from the Echo Slam. They have to control him. Here comes your Ice Blast, and the Lasso will hold him there. Arteezy will fall, and Empire get the pick off they've been waiting for. And they may get more resolutions ready for the mid lane. Universe has BKB resolution, can go for the short range hit, and exactly what he does. Not only does he get the Orchid off against the Storm Bolt, oh. but before there's a BKB counter. Ouch. And Universe is gone, both have buyback. I like watching big crits. It's also why I like watching PA games. It's, very, it's a very rewarding thing to see. Boom. Resolution brings the big one, plus 549 damage when God Strength is turned on. And that's on top of his basic 222. Two dead course. This is buyback forcing territory. I will be very impressed if EG don't have to buy back here. They've had some great defensive play so far in their base, but this might just be the limit of what their lineup can actually perform. Well, Samel's at least trying to get rid of the mid lane, but Resolution's coming in through the bottom. Ghostic already with Firefly up, looking for that target to move forward onto. Crit. As the Splinter Blast forces Resolution to blink himself further away, the melee racks under siege, fortifications available, but you got 37 Rogers seconds until they're back up, and FN is taking the tier 3 tower up on top. They baited some mail up. Where is that control? Empire, they are leaving. You got a buyback out from Arteezy. And do they regroup and go back in again for the Mirana one? It doesn't look like it. 20 I seconds is too long, is too short a time. Oh, you get Roche. I think this was everything they came for. They were hoping to force a buyback or get a barracks. They get the best buyback they could get. I think the, the Mirana would have been less valuable. And now they're straight over to the pit. They see it now. That this is respawned. And you feel like EG should come out and contest this. I just don't know if they can get there fast enough. They don't have their shrine to connect with. They're going to try, it looks like. Smoke is ready on crit. The Sunstrike scattered out both the fact that Roshan is alive as well as the they're fact that, that they started him. And the Echo Slam, it catches in focus. The Fissure as well. Sankin can't help that. The BKB Lasso onto crit. Yulzing out the Winter Wyman. There's no curse available now. He's still silenced up. Rooted to the ground. FN's going to double kill him with a Storm Lord. Resolution finishes off the Wyman. Buybacks are coming left, right, and here for evil geniuses. While well, Arteezy still wants to fight. He has some mail here. They have to make these buybacks worth it. The three cores are here ready to fight. FN's BKB triggered for the moment. Spirits himself away. That BKB got another three seconds left on it. They'll stick with him. The tornado a little bit too early. Roger still waiting for his. Control Arteezy looking at Maposhka. At least he would love to, but he can't see him. An infant's rune spawn, and Maposhka can walk away from him. Empire are playing really, really well in these fights and in this game. They're, they're taking so much advantage of the vision that they have, and they, they're playing without fear for the most part. You know, when they're playing with fear, I feel like they have good reason to. Well, EG wishes they were playing with fear right now. Yeah, unfortunately, he's their coach. Arrow flies forward. Roger, oh. not going to walk into it. But nope. everybody just chipping and saying hi. Roger, no Echo Slam, but the Fissure catching too. Here comes your Ice Blast, double stun with the Lasso. This is huge, this is massive. Universe is gone. Wyvern as well in the grave with no second life. Zai can help out. Ghostic doesn't have his BKB. The arrow flies forward. The Creep's going to actually tank that one up as Empire. Again, they move backwards. Arteezy again moves forward, looking for the fight, looking for an opening, but Empire have no holes in their defense. Zai wants resolution, but his blink's too good as well. Straight back towards the shrine. Look at this gold graph, and look at the last 30 minutes of gameplay. This is three red dots at the bottom. EG have found three kills in half an hour. And that's a kill on a Shaker, a kill on the Sven, and, or actually, maybe they've got four kills, I think, and a kill on the AA, that's it. It's just been this complete domination from Empire across the map. They've kind of had ten times as many successful moves, and it's just showing. It, that, that fight was so huge again. It, they don't get objectives, but they kind of... Was that three buybacks that were expended from EG? I think 
the Phantom Lancer expended his yep. on the defense. The Murana used her buyback. Samael used his buyback to try to take that fight. Did Zai also buyback? No, he didn't. Uh, no, he's the supports the only don't one have that luxury. Everyone oh, else has a buyback did. going five minutes on more. So crit did as well. So that's four buybacks on cooldown for EG. If Empire gets any half decent fight here, the game is over. Yep. And this is where EG, like, again, we're talking about the miracle play from them. They still do hold their racks. They do still hold their base intact. So at least they're not dealing with the split push. Like, real problem that Empire can give if they have momentum in a, in a wave. Instead, they just send FN into the other lane when they attack in the top tier three tower. That's why it's only got eight, 184 HP. The bottom lane is exposed. So Team Empire will crack a racks with this push. The question is, how much does it cost them to do it, if anything? And they're gonna smoke. They're moving closer. Five heroes all grouped up. They want an opening. They have no vision inside the EG base at the moment. No God Strength for 20. So this is a little bit of a weaker resolution right now. Zion's on the retreat. Firefly, it doesn't see in deep enough. They put down the Observe Ward. Now they do see the SK. And while well, Blank Lasso, they got crit. He doesn't have buyback. He needs to get this curse off. The Glimmer Cape hiding Invis. But where's your curse? The silence lasts too long. It was the Bloodthorn of Resolution doing the work. Blink Barra Strike trying to catch out the ES. Remember, that Echo Slam is a problem, but not if he doesn't have the mana for it. Roger going to be brought down by Arteezy. Mid lane still being attacked. The Hex over an FN, as well as the EMP burn. If they can get rid of his mana, not enough of it. He still has a 2k mana pool with a Barra Strike catching Ghost and EG. They're chipping and they're getting a ton of opportunities, but no big kills just yet. Resolution! Oh, down side! Mercy, mercy, please! FN wants more as well, but he's got no mana. Arteezy will freeze yourself in time and space. The cold beam will latch. Resolution's back. So is the Batrider with the BKB. Resolution wants to kill on Universe. He's trying to close the distance. Universe, no leap. Silence up. That may be enough. The Shrine can't do the work. FN under the cover of the BKB. Right on top of Samael. Yules send him up and towards the BKB from Samael. But the physical damage is penetrating the immunity while he's being lassoed up. This is a slaughter fest. It's a worst world killing spree at the moment. Empire will take the mid lane out. FM once more. Arteezy trying to defend it. The curse is out. Resolution, he's your friend. Oh, Don't nice force there. He pushes him away. And now the cleave goes to work. It's good game. It's done. Resolution, Empire, they take game one against evil geniuses in the lower bracket of TI. Damn, they looked really good that game. That's scary, man. That's a team that has grown a lot since the early, early group stage. Very, very impressive. And EG at the same time, this is their third consecutive loss at the main stage. We saw a similar situation from Team Liquid. They pulled it back afterwards after that loss against Team Secret. We're, we're going to need to see something, something similar here from Evil Geniuses where they just reset, start playing with more confidence. They once again have this, it's like there's this mental block at some point in the game. In this game, I think it's very understandable because they're playing without vision against a team with more information and the yep. control is really favoring Empire. But there seems to be like this mental block at some point where EG's moves just Stop working. Yeah. It, and I, I'm wondering if that also comes down to their draft. It looked like the things just, like, their timings didn't synergize in the Team Empire lineup. Like, I think the panel said it. Like, why don't they just focus on what they do good? And they did that very, very well. They had the perfect initiation. They had the stuns. They had the instant stuns control into the big team fight controllers, plus your global, plus your heavy physical damage. The Empire lineup just synergized beautifully to a point where it didn't look like there was a clear, easy answer from EG. And now they have to look for the answer. And everyone is talking about Rezo, you know, but this game for me, FN and Ghostic came up really, really big. Got to highlight those two players. For this. Yeah, fantastic performance from them. Team Empire, one series up. Man, at the end of that game, Sindarin said it best. Three kills for EG in 30 minutes. And <laughs> at one point, PyCat, you were even joking as Earthshaker was spinning around in mid lane outside front. This is what happens at TI. You just stop taking risks at some point. I mean, he was, well, I don't know. I felt like that was sort of a <laughs> tribute to Chappie, man. He was like dancing around with his shadow amulet and doing all sorts of weird stuff. But uh, yeah, in this game, I think we saw the, they did pick that peel into the Shaker and then followed up with the Sven and the Ember. And yeah. it kind of looked like EG's two cores that were in the game were sort of Invoker and, and, and Potom because Peel was just too countered to kind of be a factor in this game. Um, Arteezy didn't have that good of a game, but, you know, what, it is really difficult to play that Peel up against those heroes. So I think that this last pick, like uh, waiting, with your, waiting with your picks, the, the important course, it's something that we see 
time and time again, when you pick those scores too early, you can get countered, and it's very hard to play from that point. And I want to ask a little bit about EG consistently has had good starts in their games. Rarely do we ever see them in a poor position after 15 minutes or so. But at this point, they've lost three games in a row on the main stage. One more, and they're out. In fact, one more loss, and they will exit TI without a single win, which is a real shock given that they were top three in the last three TIs. Tomorrow, was talking about how they drafted for the lanes. Do you want to elaborate on that? Yeah, I think uh, EG focused too much on lanes. Uh, I don't know what was EG winning condition, because like, they're winning the lanes, they make these cute plays, like the Wyvern Noob to Aro, which is like, yeah, they look cool, but uh, how did they win the game? Like, they didn't stop Sven's farming stacks. They didn't slow the Bad Riders' Blink Daggers. Like, they're making an ascent operation pickups the whole game, and they have like no counterplay to that. Yeah, it was pretty difficult for them. Also, with this game, we talked a lot about resolution. I think this game was actually the least uh, resolution-focused Empire that we've actually seen. Ghostic played yeah. extremely well on the Bat Rider, and cool. yeah, Sven, Sven, they made it seem easy for him, and they just played extremely well, way better than I saw them in the group stage. The one thing that is yeah. cool about uh, Team Empire is that it kind of feels like now they're kind of just rallying around Rezo, you know? It's like sometimes when you find something to play around or someone, it, it just makes you it makes you play better. And to me, yeah, like you said, it just feels like Empire are playing better than they did in the group stage. And maybe it is because they kind of just found that, you know, they found this win and now they're sort of, you know, they know they trust in Rezo and they kind of found their stride a little bit and they're looking good. I mean, you brought up Ghostick earlier. There was the amazing blink dive with BKB on for Ghostick on Bat Rider to save Sven from the arrow. Just incredible coordination and allowing resolution to shine. Purge, talk to us a little bit about your thoughts on the match. Well, I, I agreed with a lot of what uh, Tomato said about how EG's combos were really effective, but they didn't ultimately pull through in the end. Uh, I have a clip of that here. They used Winter Wyvern's Winter's Curse to set up a very long duration stun. They bring in the Great Arrow for another five second stun, which guarantees a lot of damage output on heroes that are difficult to kill like Ember Spirit. But when you get to the point of the game where your cores have Black King bars, or even four staffs, it becomes a lot harder to kill them. They didn't quite have the setup time here um, with their uh, Potom ultimate, and unfortunately, before the a arrow was able to strike its target, uh, Resolution was able to use his Black King bar, and then the whole rest of the fight got so difficult. And there was a lot of other times where there was uh, team fights like that, because all they really had was Burrow Strike, Winner's Curse, uh, they needed arrow, and they needed those abilities to combo together. It wasn't simple. Uh, even something as simple as a four staff really interrupted that a lot of times. Guy that gets first stunned gets four staffed, which means he's out of the, uh, the direction that the arrow is coming. So it just made things really tough for them. And uh, throughout the entire game, it just really felt like Empire were the ones that could make the, the grabs, make the picks. And very often what they would do is push forward very aggressively to place Observer Wards in really good spots. Uh, they placed a couple here. They ended up sneaking all the way into the enemy jungle in a later moment to uh, do that as well. And then it just gave them this commanding vision where uh, EG, who didn't want to push, who didn't want to gank, were constantly within Wardian vision, and it gave Empire a lot more chances to actually get pickoffs. So a uh, straightforward win for Empire, and they played very well. Yeah, I'm very curious to see the ways in which EG would adjust their lineup. Because, I mean, we, we have been pretty consistent seeing resolution on the Sven, on other hard carries throughout. EG really seems like the ones who need to, well, they obviously have the very clear game plan with two flexible picks early. But, I mean, how do you adjust your picking in this spot? I think that uh, they should go for something that they kind of know well. If, if, if I were in EG's shoes now, I would, like, I would want them to go back for some something along the lines of Venomance or Draw Ranger. Kind of like get RTZ on some comfort here, maybe Lycan. Just get, get him on something that he, he likes playing and kind of just find those comfort heroes for every player so everyone knows what to do and then just go with that. Don't, don't overthink things, you know. They, they should know that they're a good team. They're all good players. They can definitely do this. I'm sure they have, you know, the crowd. I'm, I'm pretty sure they, they kind of like EG um, and uh, they have a lot going for them. So I think just go with the comfort zone and, yeah. and do the thing. You know, Tomato, more if you can speak a little bit to the fact that sometimes you've seen EG try to do too many things. Did you feel like that happened in the recent game or the recent draft? Yeah, I think they're trying to be too cute with their combos and stuff. <laughs> like, I've seen EG like do some dark tier combos. And, like, I'm pretty sure like their team fights much better than Empires, and like, they're just playing around like winning lanes. And I don't know, I don't see like a overall better strategy from EG. Meanwhile, in Empire like they're trusting resolution and they're playing around him like four stuffs protecting him, giving him stacks and stuff, and it's pretty nice. The very, the very clear game plan of Empire is paying huge dividends. 
As these players are stepping into what could be the last match of the day, we're going to briefly step away for something a little more lighthearted as Sheever and Slacks tick themselves a nice little trip to the zoo. <laughs> 